Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where our goal is to educate and debate specific stock investment ideas. So today I wanted to get us back to talking about individual stocks, and we are going to discuss Magellan Aerospace. So Magellan Aerospace is a small cap, about 300 million industrial, that trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Who cares? Well, probably no one right now, <laughs> and that's why we're going to talk about it. Uh, the company provides components, both new and replacement parts, to the aerospace industry uh, and includes end markets that are both commercial and defense sector. Uh, large customers include Boeing and Airbus, and I'm sure you've heard Boeing in the news a lot recently. Stock price is down over 60% since February, with the expected slowdown in air travel amid COVID-19 uh, and obviously uh, the delay and knock-on effects it could have with new plane orders also the issues with Boeing, et cetera, et cetera. Company is 75% owned by Murray Edwards. So if you think about a $300 million market cap, the float is even lower and there's pretty low volume on the stock. Magellan trades currently at about a seven year low. Uh, it has low uh, debt or leverage and about a 7% dividend yield. So this video will review MAL to see if it represents an attractive opportunity for investors. And I think I'm going to start doing this a little bit more, but uh, adding some disclosure around my positions. Um, so I put a position on and bought some shares in March at $6.27, but obviously disclaimer, uh, this is not investment advice, so do your own homework. So the company, like we said, diversified supplier of components to the aerospace industry. Uh, they don't have a heavy investor relations department, but their website has lots of info if you want to go in and check out the types of products uh, that they do. So here's, here's the share price chart over the last five years. And uh, you can see, let's just get some of this up here. You know, in November, they released Q3 results that were probably a little bit mixed. Um, the, the big impact, obviously, here is the COVID-19 sell-off. Uh, you know, this company was, at the end of 2019, trading at about $15 a share, and it is currently at $5.46. And so it's been a huge sell-off. If you look at it on a valuation basis, and again, we've got to be mindful that historical results here might not be indicative of future results, uh, given how quickly the industry landscapes changed. But the company is now trading at less than three times EBD EBITDA and about five times earnings. And again, but of course, that's all pre-COVID. I thought something else was interesting here. I just tracked the share price versus Boeing. And you can see that the, both companies, this is just over the last year, have basically traded exactly in line. Now, there, there's no question that Boeing is a large customer for Magellan, but I thought what was interesting here is Magellan was still profitable last year, uh, and we'll see that in a second, but Boeing profit dropped from $10 billion in 2018 to actually negative $600 million in 2019, and I think it's pretty well documented all the struggles that, that Boeing has had recently. So I think it's an interesting point for investors to, to think about whether both companies should be trading exactly in line. Uh, all right. And so financials is the next thing we're just going to talk about quickly. Revenues, Magellan's about a billion dollar top line business. And EBITDA, again, we're just looking at over three years, but I did go back a little bit further and, and pretty steady EBITDA jumps around a little bit, but approximately 150 million in, in EBITDA. Um, on average each year. Ownership's the next issue I want to run through. So again, we mentioned Murray Edwards owns 75% of the company. And I think there's an important piece of history here. Um, and he increased his ownership stake when Magellan ran into debt trouble back in the financial crisis. So in 2008, 2009, and we'll walk through their, a snip from their annual report and balance sheet below, but the shares traded as low as 31 cents in March 2009 at the depths of um, their liquidity uh, issues in particular amidst the financial crisis. So there's a snip of an article from the Globe and Mail here. And if you look at their balance sheet heading as at December 31, 2008, they had 281.5 million of debt 
and they had 235 million of that that was coming due in less than a year. So their balance sheet was in a tough spot back then and the share price almost traded down to zero. So I think just an important historical note. And I believe, don't quote me, but I think Murray Edwards increased his ownership position through that period from about 25% to 75%. And I think a lot of that was through convertible debentures. So the balance sheet today. Uh, so today Magellan has a $75 million credit facility that matures in September 2021. So uh, no, at least it's out 18 months, mostly undrawn as at December 2018 as well. They do have some long-term debt and lease li liabilities, uh, but those are offset by $70 million cash position. So you can see here, current portion of long-term debt minimal at two and a half million. Uh, and you can see total debt due within the year, which uh, there's footnotes in the financials, but includes some, some lease liabilities, etc. And then you can get a picture of the longer term debt picture. So leverage, uh, Magellan reduced their debt profile since 2009 and currently has almost no net debt. So conclusion, this is just a quick video today. I just wanted to put this one on everyone's radar. Uh, Magellan almost went under during the 2008-2009 financial crisis, given its high debt load at the time. In the following years, Magellan paid down debt and the balance sheet is much stronger today. The float on the company is small. Murray Edwards owns 75% owner, ownership and it trades about 30,000 shares a day, which is about 150K Canadian in today's prices. So this is not a name that institutions are really going to be able to trade in. I thought another interesting point to note is that the share price has been tracking Boeing up to you to decide whether it's been doing that fairly or unfairly. And the key question, of course, is how bad uh, do earnings get, not to earnings get, and do they go negative uh, during this downturn, and how long does it take for recovery in air travel demand? So in my opinion, 2020 and 2021 could and likely will be challenging, um, but the key for me is that Magellan's balance sheet is in a much stronger position to weather the storm. You do get a 7% dividend yield while you wait, with the caveat that unless this gets much worse than you know the dividend, all that's could be off, the dividend could be at risk. And you've got the potential for 2x to 3x returns on a recovery, but you might need a multi-year time horizon uh, for that. It's not something that that'll necessarily bounce back quickly in my view. So let me know your thoughts. Thought it was an interesting name, um, kind of in the heart of the storm here. Curious to get your, your view. Do you think it's an interesting investment opportunity or is it a bit too early to be jumping in? Should we be waiting for more signs of recovery on the other side? Uh, that's it for today's video. We'll be back soon with more content, but until then, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.